Hey, everybody. Long time no talk. All right. So we are now entering the second week of the megalomania assignment. And um, I know there's going to be like some still some questions out there. Um, obviously, um, just a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, you know, the uh, rewrite for the uh, COVID Mass, mass mandate lifting reaction story rewrite is due on Monday. I'm recording this over the weekend, so it, it's due on Monday. Um, so please get that in. Um, I'm really seeing a lot of good writing so far, a lot of good work. I expect a lot of A's in this class. So, um, so thanks for that. Um, and let's see what else is due. Um, and then uh, once the uh, megalomania sign, which is due a week from Monday on the 24th, we'll move on to our next assignment, um, which will deal with data journalism. Um, so anyway, um, so, okay. So anyway, I usually use this as an opportunity to actually kind of, kind of catch people up a little bit without giving away too many answers. And is actually, unfortunately, one of the drawbacks of having a remote class um, is that I have an in-person class and we're doing a similar assignment with Bill. I actually had him as a guest speaker and I was able to basically have them basically point to what they think the lead is. Just so you know, again, this is also part of housekeeping. By now, you should have actually have already, and I haven't heard, I haven't heard from one person, but that's fine. So let's use this as an opportunity to, you know, get on the stick about it. Um, but um, I would like I would like to know what you think what the lead is. Okay, I like to know very, at the very least what you think is the paragraph that 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 would provide the theme to the story. And again, it's not the first paragraph. Okay, so and the idea is actually not just to reach out to Bill, which you definitely should have done by now. Okay, you should have at the very least answer some very ask some very broad questions like, okay, so what happened here? Or what, what can you tell me? That sort of thing. Okay. Um, so that, that it should start off with that email and then Bill will respond to you. I've asked him to basically go on the record and everything as the chief spokesperson, director of communications for Megalomania, he's playing a role. Um, and uh, he will, what you should know is actually he's going to provide you some documents. Okay. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're actually going to basically find information in that documents, particularly one document, that will make this story more than it than more than it appears to be. Okay. Um, so again, I can't really go into detail because I'd like to know like where you guys stand on this. Do you, you know, send me an email what you think the lead is, so that therefore I can actually teach and maybe help and guide you guys, you know, through this. So. All right, but you have another week. I was just that you send that email to me like by today or tomorrow, okay? Just basically saying, here's what I think there's the paragraph in this story, okay? Let's go over that again, okay? Um, that that release, okay? So let's share the screen here. Um, okay, just give me one second here, dealing with the old office computer here, so. All right, yeah, and then we're gonna deal with that chapter in a bit. But anyway, um, so this is the release, okay? It's dated October 10th, but pretend it's like today, okay? Um, that was the day the thing, the whole thing was assigned, so I believe, right? So anyway, yes. So, all right. So yeah, what you have to do it again is you have to go through each of these paragraphs. You can almost like number them, okay? Which is the one that has most priority? I know there's like some crazy shit in here, okay? Excuse me. Oh, I just cursed. That's going to be a problem for YouTube, right? So... What you what you um, what you have to do though is really kind of think again. What is this? What is the part of the story that has the greatest impact? What is this th the part of the story that actually uh, was an action that happened that caused everything to change? Okay, um, that's probably about as close as I can get to giving away uh, like the, <laughs> the, the jackpotting the story as much as possible. Okay, and again, I've already told you. I've already told you that this is not the lead okay um this part right here the first paragraph make the worlds i mean this is something that happens like all the time okay um and in case i probably should have had this ready um job changes happen all the time okay 
um, corporate changes happen all the time. Okay. This is actually my magazine on the online version. Okay. And if you go to like where it is right now, we're actually going to be changing this around a bit, the online version in January. But anyway, if you, if you, you want to find out like about your corporate changes and departures and that sort of thing, we actually do have stories on that, but we put them way down on the bottom. And that is for a reason. That's because it's not that important. It isn't important enough for people to know or are interested. They want to know and involve, maybe impact the industry. But, you know, was there anything about that corporate change that was special? Were there details, poor all details, that actually, like, make this much more than a corporate change? It's your typical corporate change, okay? Um, you can see I'm still scrolling down to find <laughs> where this is it's like way down here here's executive changes okay it's way down the bottom here you see we have a bunch of them pieced together here we have uh all state name successor to retiring president i mean this kind of thing happens aon taps co for new post of chief digital officer you know i mean there's like they just go on this happens all the time but again what makes is there anything about those that are special um, we also have the uh, corporate, I don't see it here actually, corporate changes. Um, gee whiz, did they like forget it this one month? <laughs> I know we put the one together for the next month. Anyway, so maybe they just couldn't fit it in. Anyway, all right. So they do actually typically have something that basically says corporate changes in the whole thing. Okay. So, and I just don't see it. All right. So anyway, um, so that kind of thing happens, but, but, but that's not a top story. The top story is, well, right now it's, this was actually our top story for the month. These are previews that we put in for the next month, but it was basically about how the auto and auto industry is getting involved in auto insurance and it's a big deal. So it's something new, something shiny, something brand new. All right. So anyway, that's the whole point is that basically how do we get the story to get up here? Okay. And there are details in those documents that make that story a top story okay so you should know that okay um and then you got the office of the chief executive was format for a board meeting you know again is that something that this, this story should be themed around mr mion has served on the board of blah 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 mr mion this little background here again these names were actually changed this actually was based again on something that actually happened okay Mr. Garrett was co-founder of Megalomania, blah, blah, blah. Is that something that should be at the top of the story? Mr. Youngblood joined Megalomania after the company acquired TV Wrestling. Um, you know, is that something that should be at the top of the story? The manager structure will allow Megalomania to pursue a strategy of providing a broad range of entertainment. Now we got Bill's sense of humor here. The House of Wax. Sylvia Plath's uh, readings from Sylvia Plath's work. Uh, and then we got the Trump world. This actually was written. We actually started doing this before Trump was president. Um, a theme part. So don't think that, okay. Don't think that necessarily is like the big deal. Okay. Just to let you know on a landfill, keeping our shareholders happy. We've got the Andy Griffith. Is that all stuff that should be top board directors asked for and received a resignation of Marv Bronson. The board's actions were taken after internal investigation and a consultation with external counsel about the circumstances surrounding actions. Okay, is that something that should be at the top? The board concluded that it's consistent with Megalomania's code of conduct. The board concluded the facts reflected poorly in Mr. Bronson's judgment. Is that something that should be at the top? Okay, so you basically almost have to like order them in priority, okay? And there's Bill's email right there, okay? Again, the idea is that the audience, okay, the public relations people have an audience. They have an audience and that is the media, okay? And they have to basically structure things and focus things in a way to basically, you know, give out the information that they need to give, but they want it to be um, shaped in a way that they see fit, okay, that they feel will be in their best interests, okay? Well, your job is you're much more of the public trust, okay? You have the public trust in your interests, and the public trust is basically to kind of let people know, blow the whistle if necessary, on things that may be bad and then aren't necessarily good. They like change the company's reputation. You think of Megalomania, by the way, as like Disney. And if something were to change at Disney for whatever reason and something happened that, you know, um, didn't make Disney look good. So, you know, maybe like you'd want to focus on that, you know, that sort of thing. Oh my God. 
So anyway, so, you know, there you go right there. So basically think of that as like on the level of Disney and all right. All right. So that is, again, this is in the bill video, which you all should have seen already. There I am with my hat on. <laughs> that was too small for my head at the time. Um, so anyway, so yes, please make sure you watch this video. If you haven't already. Okay. And that will have, again, all the instructions in it, okay? And again, please, remember, you're rewriting this press release. And then, you know, I'm not saying that this, a lot of this stuff should be removed from the story. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it should, you know, a lot of this stuff should be at the bottom of the story because it's not as important, okay? Again, inverted pyramid, the most important stuff goes to the top, brand new stuff, the changes and everything, the stuff that actually makes the story more than just a corporate change, okay? And then, like, you go into, like, the background, and that's where you put in some of the stuff from the release, okay? All right. I mean, this is a game that's, like, followed all the time. Um, and it's not just something that's, like, done by, like, public relations practitioners, okay? It's, it's, it's done by people, like, the police have to do it, okay? And, you know, was, I actually showed this. I had, like, all these mechanical difficulties when I was doing this my in-person class because we're doing not the same release. We're doing something similar, okay? And it's really the reporter's job to kind of go to the ends of the earth, if you possibly can, to get the information you need, to get that most obtainable version of the truth, okay? Again, we can't be in the room to know, like, when some sort of corporate change is happening and why. So we have to rely on, like, sources to get that information, okay? Um, you may remember the, um, the Ahmaud Arbery case, uh, black man who was shot in Georgia, streets of Georgia, shot and killed. Um, and I mean, it's horrible to bring this up, but again, this is something that actually just started with a press release and, you know, police, I'm just going to defend this. Okay. But I mean, you know, they, they are not exactly people they should be. They're not exactly people who are trained in the art of press release writing, that sort of thing. But at the same time, you know, everybody has an agenda. Okay. Um, people know people and the whole thing. So, um, the Amon Aubrey case, man, was shot and killed. But when you actually read the original press release here, you know, you don't like necessarily get the full story. OK, um, you don't get actually anywhere near that, actually. OK, now, I mean, they're relying on witness accounts to be fair to them. They, they weren't given all the information that they need to give. But, uh, you know, when you're actually scrolling through those press releases, it's, it's, it's always done in a, a lot of times. It's, it's, they only, I mean, they don't even really write a story when they write these press releases. And that is a job. OK, that's a job to do. That's actually a, they're trying to train police officers. I don't know. Spike Lee was even like working with the New York City Police Department. I mean, he did do the right thing. That movie, uh, which is a great movie, OK, 33 years ago. And, you know, I mean, he's actually helping the New York City Police Department now and basically better communicating with the public. And probably one of the things he's telling them is not to give out press releases like this. And I tell you, the New York City Police Department, for all their faults, don't write press releases like this. <laughs> but basically, this actually has, you know, it's, it's almost written like a police report, you know, and that's not helpful, especially in a 24-7 media. OK, you know, they try to get the information out as quickly as possible. And, you know, you know, you got to you got to be like a little bit savvy in that sort of thing in order to kind of pick out what might be red, red flags. OK. The first thing you see, actually, are the listing arresting officers, okay? A lot of times that's not even, so many times that's not even listed, that's not even identified in a, in a, in a, in a news report, the arresting officers, okay? And then you get into, okay, so who was involved here? You have a, an auto, you have a trespassing incident, linked incident. Really? Is that, is that really the case? Was there really a trespassing incident? That could, like, send you in a, in a, in a different direction um trespassing again okay now we got witnesses here okay joseph albanese robert olson diego perez randall Omar parr larry english and then we have a victim actually i'm sorry larry english is a victim okay that's what it's, that's how it's listed okay uh, um <clears throat> mount arbery we do have a suspect here travis mcmichael because there was a shooting involved so he's going to be identified as a suspect um initiate <clears throat> excuse me initiating call now we get into what they call the narrative okay and as you can see right here this is not written to be a story to basically attract attention necessarily okay 
On Sunday, February 23rd, 2020, I responded as a arresting officer to the office of Tola Drive, it was Tia Drive, and Holmes Drive in reference to shots fired. While en route, I, had, I was advised where shot, well, yeah, there were shots fired and a male on the ground bleeding out. A short time later, I was advised the male on the ground was deceased. Upon my arrival, I observed Officer Shu setting up a perimeter. I began speaking with Gregory McMichael, who was a witness to the incident. So I identify him as a witness here. Okay. Um, McMichael stated there have been several break ins in the neighborhood, and further, the suspect was caught on surveillance video. Okay, so the suspect was caught in a surveillance video. Who's the suspect? McMichael stated he was in front of his front yard and saw the suspect from the break-ins. Keep that in mind, okay? Hauling ass down Satia Drive toward Buford Drive. Say that he ran inside this house and called Travis McMichael and said, Travis, the guy is running down the streets. Let's go. That was jogging, by the way. Um, McMichael stated he went to his bedroom and grabbed his 35 Magnum. And Travis, it's a powerful shotgun, grabbed his shotgun, powerful gun, because they didn't know if the male was armed or not. McMichael stated the other night that he saw some male, and he stuck his, his head down in his down his pants, which led to them believe that the man was male was armed. McMichael stated that he and Travis got in a truck and drove down to a drive toward Buford, uh, Burford Drive. McMichael stated that they arrived at the intersection, saw the unidentified male running down the streets. Um, the NFA male turned around and began running back in the direction from which they came, and Roddy attempted to block him and was unsuccessful, according to this report here. McMichael stated he then jumped into the bed of the truck, and he and Travis McMichael continued to Holmes and attempt to intercept him. Um, stated that they saw the identified male and shouted, stop, 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 I want to talk to you. They stated they pulled up uh, beside male and shouted, stop again. At which time Travis exited the truck with a shotgun. McMichael stated that the identified male began to violently attack Travis. And the two men then started fighting over the shotgun, at which point Travis fired a shot. And then a second later, there was a second shot. McMichael stated the male fell over on the pavement while his hand was under his body. McMichael stated he rolled over the man to see if, he, see if the male had a weapon. Well, did he? I observed Mc, on McMichael's hands from rolling, uh, blah, blah, blah. And if I, I'm sorry, I don't see photographs. Okay, I'm just trying to get through this. It's very, you know, it's very, very hard to read. They were on the scene. The coroner, unfortunately, pronounced the person dead. You know, identify the man in here. Okay, and then they give like some other details down here. Um, okay, so that was what all people knew at that time. Okay, and it was interesting because there actually was a report. There were news stories that came out, and one of them I read was actually cryptically worded away. I have, I have a feeling that people were kind of like, hey, you got to like, they were letting the reporters know, you got to know there was more to this than not. But what can you do? You don't have more evidence, the whole thing. What do you do? You know, do you stop here? You know, if I had you in a class in front of me, I'd say like, what do you do? Okay, this is actually what I was hoping to ask my class, <laughs> you know, when I ran into technical difficulties. So then it actually took, I think about like two months, it was it two or three, two months, a, a video came out and we've seen this time and time again, right? Or suddenly we get to that most obtainable version of the truth. And this basically restarted the investigation, which would basically, from my understanding, was like basically stuck in neutral for a while. And then we actually see what happens here. Um, and we have a man actually, he's actually driving a truck. And remember they were saying it was hauling ass down the boulevard. Well, was that really hauling ass? This is uh, Aud Aubrey. He's running probably as fast as I do when I jog down the street. And then we have this. Suddenly we have a truck. And by the way, there was actually something you should hear, interestingly enough, because I'll try to get the, I don't think I have the sound up enough. Listen to the click. Listen for the click. The gun. Okay. Okay. So, you know, basically people saw that and they said, yep. And they said, well, geez, what would you do if somebody came at you with a gun? You know, no matter who you are. I once had a knife pull me in New Brunswick, you know, and what I did was I ran 
I didn't have I didn't have the guts to actually like fight back, you know. But sometimes it's not a good idea being a hero, right? But this in that particular case, I had the ability to run. In this particular case, Mod Aubrey didn't have the ability to run. He just saw he saw a gun. He was close up to it, and he had to do something about it. So when that came out, that basically told people that like there was a lot more than meets the eye to this story. And if you didn't know about it already, this is what came as a result. Mr. Arbery, a 25-year-old black man, was chased by and killed by white residents of a South Georgia neighborhood. They were convicted of murder and federal hate crimes. Okay? Federal judge sentenced two Georgia men to life in prison on August 8th for the pursuit and slaying of Ahmad Arm- 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 Arbery. A third man was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Travis McMichael, the shooter. McMichael, the shooter. Then we have Gregory McMichael, Michael. And their neighbor, William Bryan, are motivated by racism. They chased down Mr. Arbery. Um, 25 year old black man, they were convicted of, convicted of a federal hate crime. The men were found guilty of attempted kidnapping. I mean, again, they were held, he was held at gunpoint. Um, that's what happens when you go beyond what's just a, on the panel when you seek the most obtainable version of the truth. You actually find out and find out what really happened. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to find the driver. Remember, you heard the gun click and the person who was driving and actually had the, um, no, he was convicted too. Um, he tried to act from what I understand like he wasn't really involved that he was just taping but that click that gun click gave it away okay um let's see here Mr. Aubrey was running down I was suspected it looked like a man was, was suspected in several break-ins well how do you how did they know um they called the Travis McMichael his son um a third man was involved in pursuit Okay, uh, and there was the two people, two of the people were convicted, Greg McMichael and Travis McMichael, okay, um, and, oh yeah, and there's the actual, there's a press, there's actually a letter written to the police department, um, and in this letter, Let's get back to that in a second because this my computer is slow, unfortunately. Um, let me just go back a little bit here. William Bryan, I believe, was the one who was actually driving the truck. Um, I should have checked that before. Actually, I, I called this up. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Michael. Okay. Well, they're not going to tell me this right away, are they? Okay. There's the there's the reporting that or there's the release I showed you before. Um, more than two months had passed without an arrest. Okay, that was you know when they had they pulled out the uh, video. Um. Anyway, I'm, I'm for some for whatever reason I'm not actually seeing it here. Okay, my office received our report on April 1st. For instance, we were required to hand the victim's mother has clearly expressed she wants myself and my office off the case. She sees a conflict in that my son works and blah, blah, blah. So you can see that people were getting involved in this and saying, like, a lot more to this was happened um, than, pe- than meets, the, meets the eye, okay? Um, again, I want to see if Brian the driver... The video captured by William Bryan, okay, was brought to the world's attention. So he was the guy that actually clicked the gun. I think he basically tried to make himself out to be, you know, somebody who was, like, not involved, just basically, like, almost like an eyewitness. He was more than a witness, as you can see here. And and basically, literally, from what I understand, they convicted him on that gun click, okay? So this is why we need to chase things down, okay? Otherwise, you know, we're not going to get the information we need to save people's lives really not, and i hope i'm not overstating or be hyperbolic but this is saving people's lives now okay so you know i mean this story that we're doing right here isn't necessarily saving people's lives but you know you just really should be in the art you should be in the you know in the frame of mind that there's always more than meets the eye okay all right so again um He's our, he was our guest speaker. Again, you have to watch the lecture video, which I already showed you. There's the release, which I've showed you, shown you. 
Um, again, the first paragraph is in the lead. This is what reporters do. They go beyond what's handed to them on the silver platter and report and prioritize information that matters to them. You need to get, you need, I'm going to reemphasize this. You need to basically talk to Bill and find out that, um, you know, that uh, what the story is really about. Okay. Um, you really need to go beyond just like, uh, you know, again, I mean, you know, you get, again, once you find that paragraph, that gives it away, <laughs> you know, that basically, basically tells you like, um, I'm actually just going to call this up again. Gives, you know, the paragraph that gives thing away, um, or Bronson, um, you need to, you know, find out like, again, like Bronson and him leaving and like what, what him leaving. Oh, I gave something away. Oops, sorry. I hope you watched the tape this far. So anyway, um, <laughs> And pretty extraordinary details at that, and not just one detail. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, let's go back to the assignment again. And yeah, Bill is, and then once you get those details, you need to go back to Bill and say, like, well, what was like the consequences of these actions and that sort of thing? I would say, anything come out of this, blah, 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 that wasn't said in the release. You have to watch the video. You have to scrape for that information, okay? And again, do Monday, October 24th, okay? All right. I hope we're all good with that. And again, here's a couple of chapters we've kind of laid off looking at the book lately, but I'm looking at the chapter 19 because it's more relevant to our book first because we, we had to read chapter 17 and 19. But again, you know, public relations is media, okay? So just again, the audience is different, but they both – Research and write stories for the public. The journalists write stories to provide an objective account of current events and issues. The PR prediction writes news releases or the access spokespeople that provide a client in the hopes of getting stories published in the media or circulated. Now, because of, again, because of the uh, situation, <laughs> because of technology and all that, obviously, digital technology, um, they can actually actually direct, direct their stuff right directly to the public if they wanted to, you know, through Facebook or releases that could be released, the whole thing. And police can do that. Um, I mean, their job is to essentially promote an organization, but also protect the image of the organization. Okay. Um, you have like different PR agencies. Um, I actually once interviewed for a public relations job and I really had a hard time going, getting through it. I mean, I work for a trade pub right now, which isn't too far away from that, but trade, trade publications basically write a little more favorably of an industry than others do, but it still feels like real journalism, but um, corporate non-power, you have corporate, non-profit and government PR. You have basically, you know, you have, you have spokespeople who basically, you know, try to put a spin on things. You see that at the white house a lot, actually, it's probably something I should have called up. Um, um, you have spokespersons who actually like deal with the media. One thing you see like right now, it depends on like, who's the president, but you see Fox is, let's say a typical like conservative media. Okay, but um, Jen Saki was her name, and she was um, she was basically tangling a lot with um, a lot with um, <laughs> on uh, basically the uh, the Fox News people, especially this one particular reporter, um, Ducey was his last name, right? So. Let's see what we got right here. And she, a lot of people thought that she maybe she was a little too sarcastic. She's actually since left that job and gone on to not necessarily because she was pushed out or anything, but let's just see what how she basically. Of course, we'll go through an ad. The cafe has impacted um, this entire community. We're offering them a. So anyway, um, you know, but basically the job of the spokesperson is not necessarily just to write press releases, but also to kind of help shape the news. Okay, and uh, so here we go. <laughs> President tries to reach unvaccinated Americans. Has there been any thought given looking back uh, to the possibility that he may have created? Make sure we got captions here. Let's do this. Start off with this again. All right. Let's start off with this again. President tries to reach unvaccinated Americans. Has there been any thought given looking back uh, to the possibility that he may have created some vaccine hesitancy when last year, around this time, the previous administration? was rushing to get a vaccine authorized. And the now president said, I trust vaccines, I trust scientists, but I don't trust Donald Trump. And at this moment, the American people can't either. Well, I think it's safe to say he still doesn't trust Donald Trump. So that hasn't changed, but he does trust scientists. He does trust data experts. And he does trust the people leading the CDC, the FDA, 
uh, which is the gold standard of approval for vaccines. I'd also note, because this question often comes up, that the president has repeatedly given credit to uh, scientists and experts from the prior administration, uh, even as recently as just a few weeks ago, for their role in moving the vaccine forward. Yes, but at the time when Donald Trump is out there saying we're going to have a vaccine in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, and Joe Biden is out on the campaign trail saying don't trust Donald Trump, did that create any kind of vaccine hesitancy? Not that we've seen in the data. I would note that at the time, just for context, the former president was also suggesting people inject versions of poison into their veins to cure COVID. So I think that's a relevant and, point. And Joe Biden, then vice president. All right. So. You got the point right there. Basically, you know, the job there is, you know, a lot of, a lot of people thought, I mean, maybe well, some people, maybe whatever, a lot of people, some people thought that maybe it should be a little too sarcastic. But, you know, the point there is like a lot of times what they do is like they basically kind of spin. I actually happen to think that she was doing a good job there personally. I'm sorry, I have to say. But, it, you know, but but she was kind of spinning in a way like basically the kind of shifted back at Donald Trump. Kind of shifted back of Fox News saying, look, you know, this isn't about like, you know, trusting the credibility of vaccines or that sort of thing or scientists about the trusting the credibility of Donald Trump. The Fox News reporter was trying to shape it as like more about not trusting Donald Trump and how bad that could be. The the spokesperson, Jen Psaki, was saying, look, trusting Donald Trump was not trusting Donald Trump. She was saying was not was, not, was the right thing. It was you got to trust the scientists in the vaccine. But they're basically throwing it back in another way. So good, bad, or indifferent. So um, one thing you should know about like this, though, is that like the one thing, the one, the one problem with especially with the twenty four seven media nowadays, you have this kind of situation where where you have a spokesperson who gives press conferences, or you have press releases being like essentially now has become like the primary way to actually give news, provide news. Um, You know, and what it what it has done though is that because because you can't really move fast enough sometimes, you have to come out with whatever comes out, you know, and that's what those people in Georgia had to do. I assume they had to come out with whatever they came out with, but then, you know, used to, used to have like the time of like an entire day before digital media to actually like get like more, more the closer to the obtainable version of the truth. And you know, I often didn't get it in one day, but, but you, you did have an opportunity, much more of an opportunity to do that. Now you don't, that's why you rely on press releases. So press releases is almost like a kind of a form of control from the other end and from the end of whoever provides that. And, and then also it's a way to actually kind of, again, to kind of um, shape things and control the message. And then also press conferences are that way too. It's the reporter's job to get that control back. Okay. If they come out with a press release that basically says that, that they're reshaping, they're changing the company structure when there was some dude who was running the company and doing a lot of bad things. Okay what am I referring to? Um, then you basically have to write about the guy who was already doing the bad things because that could change the shape, the, the, the narrative of the company and what it's all about and whether you should actually like continue sh- working with that company and that sort of thing. I mean, when, you know, believe it or not, I mean, uh, you know, you rarely see this oil companies actually like have suffer problems, but you know, when the Exxon Valdez crashed into uh, the coast of Alaska in 1989, Exxon stock like went way down the whole thing because a lot of people actually would draw, keep driving down the road to avoid Exxon. And it put enough of a dent. I mean, it didn't kill Exxon, but it put enough of a dent in Exxon um, because they spilled oil and killed all this wildlife and destroyed the shores over there. They put enough of the dent in Exxon to like really like harm their stock price, their profits, the whole thing. That That's what happens sometimes, you know? So you have to think of like, Megalomania on the level of Exxon. If Disney were to have somebody who like was a pervert running the show, you know, I mean, obviously it goes against their brand. Okay. So, you know, because they're supposed to be this family brand. So again, you know, people might just like kind of like turn off Disney and I mean, yeah, I didn't think I didn't say kill the company, but put enough of debt, dent in their profits and that sort of thing to harm it. Okay. Um, so that's why you have these people kind of like, they're essentially running interference between you and, and the media and the company. Okay. Bill will always would tell me that like one thing you never do is like, first of all, you shouldn't lie, which, you know, it's funny. I actually interviewed for a job and I said that to a public waste job one time and maybe like totally contradicted that. <laughs> um, and, but the other thing you should do is and you should really be careful about like how you spin things. And, but we also, you also have to like make sure that like like when you have a company CEO, they might, might not necessarily be savvy in talking to the media. They may something be say something stupid or out of context or something, whatever. And you know, you want to have a public relations person there who is actually trained with working with the news media, okay, 
who knows how to handle the media and basically address things. And, you know, not only that, but like work with the news media, make sure the information comes out right, you know? So it doesn't, so it actually, cause we've had lots of cases where companies have actually made things worse by like the stuff they've come out with, or even like presidents or whatever, you know, like Trump liked to run his own press conferences and it worked for him for a while during COVID. But then when he started talking about injecting bleach and how that actually could actually help against COVID, it ended up harming him, you know? So, you know, he needed somebody there to basically like speak for him, you know? Um, all right. So, you know, public relations practitioners use various media to get information about their client to the public. They determine which media outlets will best serve. Of course they do. Um, you know, again, it also, it's a matter of politics, you know, I mean, you know, they'll go after people who, um, you know, who, who will, maybe be against their politics or they go or they go with people who are, are for their politics so um you see a lot of this like maybe with advanced stories um you know you know basically they want to i mean one of the first things i covered actually it was actually palestinian culture night i didn't have a lot of background in that kind of situation when i was at Rutgers. so luckily i had people to talk to me about the whole history there what was going on there you know people both who were uh in, with Israel and people who are with the whole idea of actually making Palestine a state. So I was able to kind of like get the opportunity to actually like talk to people and get some understanding there because I had no idea what was going on. You know, it was 1985. I was 18 years old. Um, event stories, you can help shape the theme of an event, you know, especially if something bad happens at an event, if you have somebody there who's actually um, helping you out. I mean, one of the things I'm doing right now is actually, I actually still write stories and everything and I'm actually doing a story on the outlook for the insurance industry in 2023. So it's essentially a feature assignment. So I actually have people I'm working with, some of whom I used to work with in the <laughs> in my profession, who actually are helping me like actually get up, get in touch with people and, sh and shape the story, okay? Um, they show you the press release again, like it's very similar to the megalomania one. You know, I mean, it basically is written in a way, it necessarily is a, is a, um, a news story, but you know, is, you know, but you have a headline that they'll give. They want to. They want you to like. They'll. They would love it if you just repeated their headline. <laughs> and sometimes when you're writing like really quickly and you have no other choice, <laughs> and if it's not not so much of a controversial story, you might actually follow that 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 press release writing like pretty close to the uh, word for word. Okay. Um. You know, you want a list of contact for follow up. You want to basically like. You want to be open to them. You want to like make sure. I mean, Bill's playing a cat and get mouse game with you, which might piss people off, but you know, he's eventually going to provide you more of the answers that you need or all the answers you need, perhaps. Um, you want to provide like as much, you localize the information, make it attract, attractive to the actual people involved. Okay. Um, all right. Um, all right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes there's like, I guess so many press releases for things that are just like, not i mean they try to stretch it into like insurance when it really has nothing to do with it okay advertising basically is actually almost like a form of journalism itself because you have to write a jingle or whatever you have to write a slogan or whatever to help sell the product well that's what you have to do with a news story is you have to help sell the story to the readers and make them interested in doing it and one of the activities i do in my in-person class is actually i have them um do a do do a um um they come up basically i have them essentially do a uh ruckers coming up with a soft drink in their science labs and they've actually charged the people in the public relations department public information office to come up with essentially a way to basically help them shape the whole idea for the soda you know this is what happens you have scientists who work with people who have nothing to do with science but they want to like this is how they get in touch with people they get in touch with the public as they work with public relations people to help them shape their product and you know, I think cheese was, 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 was developed at Rutgers. So I heard, so maybe that, and they want to get an idea. So basically the idea is what I had the class do is actually have them pick out a slogan and a product and come up with five reasons why they should drink it. Okay. Um, all right. So that's actually chapter 19. All right. Um, and then the other chapter I had was somewhat related to public affairs reporting. Okay. Um, so yeah, this deals up more of the, what I showed you was more in that chapter was more of the professional end of things. Public affairs deals more with like the government organizations and that sort of thing. And, 
and you know crime and accidents okay too small um that sort of thing first time in many newspaper reporters have is the is the, is the police beat beginning uh beginning television or radio journalists have more various assignments but covering crimes and accidents will be a major part of their jobs as well but not all police reporters are beginners some have covered the beat for many years so you basically have the job of actually essentially covering all the things that happen you know on the police beat but you have like you have it's actually really important to go beyond the press release and maybe develop sources you know and and that's what i'm guessing what happened with the arbory case is that again hopefully that the local newspapers had sources that were basically at least whispering in her ear and i talked to you before about the whole off the record and why off the record is important you know there were probably people telling them off the record stuff the stuff they didn't want to be identified with or named with but it was stuff that basically you know, gave them the idea that like something bad happened here, you know, something worse than what was, what met the eye based some, and, and, and there possibly somebody was even aware of a video. Okay. Um, you know, there's police documents. Cause maybe like, you know, a lot of times we're actually given information and, you know, the, we'll get the police press release or something like that. But then what we've done, when I, what we did when I worked at Patch was we would actually ask for what was called the affidavit. And that would actually provide a much lengthier explanation of what would happen. And that would be all written in much more police speak. But a lot of times we'd find stuff in this affidavit that would go way beyond the press release. And, um, and basically, uh, sorry about that. And, and basically, um, you know, that's the, that's the garbage disposal, sorry. Um, that would go way beyond the press release and that sort of thing and you know really tell more of a narrative and you can see it right here affidavit for arrest search warrants about investigations help reporters understand what police were doing so you get more of kind of a nuance of things okay there's like prison records medical examiners reports all sorts of things that you can actually once you come out with that initial police report it can help develop much more of a narrative and what you do is you follow it up or you have a sidebar or something that basically provides more of the story. And of course you want to do things like you want to respect victims. You want to respect the rights of people. I mean, what I hate is when like, I have like reporters cover funerals in a situation and they actually will go to the funeral and pretend not to be, um, you know, a family member or something like that, which I mean, I know that's not necessarily is not as, I mean, that's something that's actually commonly done, but I mean, is it really that necessary? You know, do you really want to like have a relationship with the public or not? Do you really want to like have a credible reputation or not? Um, what, you, what you should do is actually a lot of times actually families will actually want the reporters there. So what you should do is you should check with the family first. And then what you do is you write a story basically about a family grieving. And if they want that out there, that's an opportunity to get that out there. So um, again, there's actually like a whole accounting here, which like we've kind of already covered already basically you know, getting all the information you need to, you want to write out, get out of the police speak that's typically written in. And, and, and much like in this press release about Michael Mania, you want to get out of the speak of the press release. Um, like one thing I've always talked about, I think I talked about before, is that he writes in Mr. He writes the courtesy titles in the press release. And a lot of times I see the stuff come from students and it'll say Mr., the courtesy title. And you don't have to do that in there because the press release people did that. <laughs> OK, you, you know, there's only like maybe a couple of newspapers actually use courtesy titles, one of them being The New York Times. Most don't. OK, they just really write straight. They really use the, lat, the full name and the last name. So you, just because the press release does it doesn't mean you have to. OK. City and council governments, same deal. I mean, they write about local budgets and taxes. And again, they, what they'll do is they'll do like a presentation to kind of like show like what they how they feel certain things work and how like you know they're gonna whenever they raise a tax or something like that they're gonna basically try to defend it or whatever but what you know how to do is you need to go beyond just that and see if like okay are they spending their money correctly are they uh you know is there like any kind of waste in there you want to get a copy of the budget it's interesting like because a lot of times you know they actually are raising money because they are paying for things that people need but you know there was this town maybe some of you heard of it, it's called manchester it's down, in, it's down in southern New Jersey, and there was all sorts of things that were happening down there. Um, Manchester is an interesting town. I don't know if you know about it. My father lives there. And um, it was a fam It was a township for a very long time. It just had farms in it and, and, and pine barrens, okay, in southern New Jersey. And, um, and what they did was essentially is they um, – there was a man by the name of uh, Joe Portash who came up with the idea 
hey, let's like make some money for the town. Let's bring in all these retirement communities. Um, and um, so with the retirement communities, we, we, we can actually bring in what they call rateables, tax revenues to the town. And because the people are older, they're not going to bring in kids. So you don't have to build schools or, you know, you don't necessarily have to build big supermarkets or cause a lot of traffic and things like that. And it was supposed to bring in a lot of revenue for the town. But then suddenly out of nowhere, they just kept just raising taxes to like this really high level. You know, it was really strange to a lot of people. And I remember I covered one of the meetings that actually, um, you could hold on for one second. Um, Hello. Um, just hold on for one second, please. And um, I'm trying to pull. Sorry about that. My wife had to take an important call. So you see, I changed locations. <laughs> so anyway, um, so all the, they were raising all this, these, t these taxes and everything, and they're raising all really high levels and people are like, what the hell? So, um, <laughs> um, so that didn't match up. Okay. So there was something beyond the pale and, um, and cause there was really no, and they really weren't doing a good job justifying it. They were covered with reasons for doing so. Um, then somewhere around, that was like 1989, and then I think it was January 1990, one day somebody saw all these documents being brought to a landfill, um, <laughs> and apparently it was all sorts of embezzlement going on, there was money that was, all that money that was being made, run as, a, as revenues and everything was actually being spent down Atlantic City, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars, I believe, was being spent and gambled down Atlantic City, and it was also filling the coffers of like, uh, a lot of the public officials there. Yeah. And all sorts of bad stuff. So, you know, it's not always necessarily for a good reason. You have to really kind of examine things as closely as possible. Okay. Let me just share the screen a little bit more here. Um, you know, courts, again, that's another one. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's really hard to, given the shorter, smaller staffs and everything of, to actually like cover, get things. But, you know, covering the actual court proceedings is actually really um, important because you get so much information from that. But you know, a lot of times there's actually documents, affidavits, and the, and the, that too that basically don't necessarily come up in trial and that sort of thing that can provide you more information than you would have expected. Okay, and then you know more of this chapter actually goes into that. Um, you have civil cases, lawsuits that will help explain things. In my other class, we actually again we we are actually doing. Again, a similar story. It's a megalomania company, but that guy in that particular case, his name is Steve Austin, who got bounced, essentially. And in that particular case, uh, Bill is serving up a lawsuit that shows that he was involved in all these, this actually, again, also based on a real incident, involved in all these sexual harassment allegations and everything. So um, this is all legal stuff that's on the record, okay, um, that you can use and help basically provide background information and substance for your stories, okay? All right, so that's it. And I really appreciate it, um, you guys paying attention. So we need to get those stories in. And I really, again, emphasize, you really need to hear from me um, on the, um, on the, uh, on the Megalomania press release. I'm sorry, I really need to hear from you on the Megalomania press release. Please do so right away, Monday, Tuesday, whatever. Please, I hope you watch this video. Um, I'll make a note of it in my, uh, in my um my announcement for this uh this lecture okay thanks very much guys and i'll talk to you